Hey everyone and welcome. I just wanted to take a couple more minutes to go into a little more detail explaining the shift of the nodes that happened this past week on May 5th. Um, the North Node moved into Gemini and the South Node just moved into Sagittarius. And the lunar nodes, they're not actually like planets, like we can't see them, yeah? They're the intersection point between the path of the moon and the sun. And so they create an axis, which is where the solar and lunar eclipses happen. The nodes have been in Cancer and Capricorn kind of activating that part of the sky and that part of your chart since October 2018. So the last time that the North Node was in Gemini was 18 years ago, around, uh, I think it shifted like October 14th, 2001, and then it moved out in the spring of 2003. So you can think back to that time in your life and see what kinds of themes and topics were coming up for you then and see if any of those topics begin to come up or you start to see some movement in those areas of your life again. Because it's not to say that there will be repeat experiences, but some topics or some themes or certain parts of your life or concerns may start to find some shifting happening. So because eclipses tend to bring movement, they bring beginnings and endings and energy, this kind of something will happen. And it tends to shift these areas of life towards instability. And that doesn't mean instability is in devastation. It means instability is in no longer fixed, but things are now moving, beginnings, endings. And when we think of the nodes, a lot of themes come up around intake, digestion, narrative, growing the story, dispersion, releasing. And the areas of your chart that these are activating are going to express themselves through the personalities of Sagittarius and Gemini. So it's not only going to activate the houses of Gemini and Sagittarius, but also just the angles of the mutable signs. So if you have any significant placements, aspects, or transits in Gemini, Sagittarius, Virgo, Pisces, or um, that's going to be engaging with that eclipse axis. Um, and so that will bring up a nodal discussion for you and a relationship with these things um, for the next year and a half or so while they're activating those parts of your chart. We will have one more set of eclipses in Cancer and Capricorn in late June, early July to kind of wrap up those areas of the chart. Um, and after that, we should start feeling a little more stability happening in those areas. But we'll talk about more about those eclipses when we get to them. In Vedic astrology, the nodes are often talked about as a dragon, where the north node is the head of the dragon, Rahu, and the south node is the tail of the dragon, Ketu. And the head is hungry, it's taking in, it's looking towards what's next. And the tail is digesting, dispersing, releasing. With the dynamics of Gemini and Sagittarius, what we're looking toward, what our opening our mouth to is information. It's facts, it's multifaceted views and diversity of experience. And what we're being invited to release is the need to be right and the idea that there's only one way. We want to see the whole gallery and not just get stuck at looking at one picture and prioritizing people over a sense of like righteousness and like being right or being more concerned with um, diplomacy and tactfully communicating, as opposed to being concerned with just proving others wrong. So I think a lot of invitations come up with this, and a lot of the big ones are, can we respond to facts and not just feelings? Facts and information, and not just fundaments of what we've been taught to think. So there is, can we give ourselves permission to, and others permission, to also change our minds? If we have a conversation, can that change our mind? Can we respond to new information and allow ourselves to be changed by it? And maybe change our view in a big way or a small way, or at least open up a space in us where we're allowing that to be possible in someone else. Gemini is an air sign and it's curious and playful and it wants freedom to think about a lot of different things in a lot of different ways. And the North Node, the Hungry Node, is moving towards this. And in Sagittarius, what we're releasing is fundamentalism. It's an attachment to what we think is true of over-idealizing institutions and pursuing truth and what we feel is true over everything else, being too attached to our ideas about what is good, what is right, what is bad, the shoulds. So this axis wants us to use logic, 
to respond to present information and stay in the here and now. It's perhaps our search for truth is now found in community and conversation with others. And it's not something that trickles down from people who are higher up from us. It's something that we find and we work towards together and in response to each other's experience. So how can we get better at speaking with one another and listening to one another so that we can respond and appreciate the people in front of us? And this is already coming up in a big way for me at home in my life, um, which is the area in, of Gemini in my chart is my home life, my private life. And can we make connecting with others a priority over convincing others of our position and our ideas? Where can we listen? Where can we ask? Where can we listen some more? You don't have to be the authority on something to be valid or to communicate meaningfully. And choosing people over solitary devotion to truth. And we may see that not just in our lives, but also in culture at large, we may start to see some of these themes coming up, which I believe we already are. So choosing connection over truth. So we're not choosing truth in a way that costs us community or at the expense of other people, not capital T truth. But what about the truths? What about the information? What about the evidence? What about the facts? And it wants us to be spontaneous and listen to the present moment and let yourself think anything, test it out, see how it feels, listen to others. What does that mean about what is happening and what is real and how I feel? The other thing to consider is you know what house Gemini and Sagittarius come up for you. So you'll need to look at your natal chart and know your rising sign in order to see what topics the Gemini Sagittarius occupation is gonna bring up for you. And also I would say pay attention to the Pisces Virgo houses as well. So as the eclipses are happening for the next 18 months, um, after that final Cancer Capricorn, it's, there's going to be some movement, as we said, some beginnings, some endings, some instability, which just means movement, um, and strong energies happening there, kind of along the themes that we talked about. So I hope this is helpful, and I'll follow up with another video next week uh, to dive into the Venus retrograde, which kicks off on May 13th.